why do you suppose that as sophisticated, as educated, and mature as we are, we would rather choose suicide than to accept the gracious healing that can come from our Savior. Do you think that we can cure the sickness of society out of our own resources? People want to be saved, but they want to be saved on their own terms. There's nobody really wants to be lost. There's nobody really wants to go to hell. Now, there are many who will get angry with you even if you suggest that they go there. Nobody wants to go to hell. But they want to be saved on their own terms. You know, we just don't like to follow directions. We will go to the doctor and he will give us a prescription. We take it to the pharmacist and he will fill that prescription and type the directions on that so we can read it. And we will read it and understand what the doctors say. Uh, but instead of taking three pills a day, I say, I think I can get by with one. Haven't you done that? If it tells you to take it in the morning, well, I can take it in the day. I can take it before I go to bed. We just don't like to follow direction. We can see a sign saying wet paint. And there's something in us that just want to make us touch it to see. We want to have our own way about it. Uh, we want to go to heaven. We want to be saved according to how we think. I think if I do thus, I think I'll make it. The robe of righteousness is not altered to fit the man. The man has to be altered to fit the robe. Did you know there are some people who don't want to play the game by the rules. Uh, somebody uh, thinks that he can have his way, think that the rules ought to be changed just to suit him. Now in the kingdom of God, uh, salvation would be first base. Baptism and uniting with the church would be second base and Christian service would be third base. And you've got to get to third base before you can come home. Now can you see a fella wanting to leave home plate and go straight to second? You know he's out, don't you? Well, we think that we can do that in the church. The Lord tells us to believe on the Lord and be baptized and thou shalt be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And we'll say, oh, I believe in the Lord, but uh, I'm not ready for baptism. And there are some who will go and get baptized before they're saved. They unite with the church for a lot of reasons. They'll miss first base and go straight to second. If you do that on the baseball diamond, even though you come in home standing up, the umpire's going to say you out. Well, why? Why? Jumping up and down. Why? You didn't even go to first base. Uh, people want to have their way. Now, in this text, Naaman spent a fortune trying to find a cure. And when he heard of a cure, it was so simple until he staggered and he liked to have fallen out of the path of hell. It was so simple until he bypassed that, looking for something else. There are a lot of people who want to make coming to the Lord difficult. They want to see a certain thing. They want to hear a certain thing. They want to have weird experience. Each one of us is an individual and the Lord deals with us as individuals. I am to come to him like S.M. Locke 
and you come like you are. There's no need of uh, hearing somebody's testimony and saying, when I get saved, I want to be just like that. No, we have preconceived notions about being saved. We plan it, we sit down and figure out what it's going to be like. Naaman, as you know, was a prominent soldier. He was a leader in the Assyrian army. He was the captain of the king of Assyria's host. He was powerful, he was handsome, he was attractive. He was a great man with his master and he was honorable because God used him to give deliverance to Syria. And he was a mighty man in valor. He was respected by men, women, and children. And I suspect that when he went down the streets, the boys on the playground would say, when I grow up, I'm going to be just like Mr. Nate. He was well respected. But the Bible says he was a leper. Now, every individual without Christ is a leper. Any individual who thinks that he can have his own way disregard the word of the Lord and have his own way he is a leper. Modern men are knowledgeable, they are mighty in intelligence and they are mighty in capacity, but they are not whole and sound of soul. There seemed to have been no cure uh, where Naaman lived. There was a shadow cast on the whole family. His wife was heartbroken. His children couldn't understand it. His servants discussed his case. The cooks used it for a topic of conversation. His friends kept that distance from him. All of the shields on his wall and the trophies were from foreign conquests. And the medals of honor could do him no good. But help is always available, but you have to know where to get it. The hour of mercy is now. Perhaps you think that your condition is beyond repair, but I've come to tell you, you can be saved. And possibly you will hear somebody ask, can a leper change his spots? No, he cannot, but God can. If you are a sinner, you can become a sinner. If you are broken, you can be mended. If you are doubting, you can be trusted. If you are in sorrow, you can be rejoiced. Now, there are some incurable diseases, but sin is not one of them. Though your sins be as scarlet, they can be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they can be as wood. Now, in Naaman's household, there was a maiden who had been torn away from her homeland and brought into Syria, and she was placed in Naaman's house to be the maid for Naaman's wife. Now, this little girl could have been bitter. She could have said, well, they took me from my homeland without my permission and against my will, and I'm going to retaliate. But no, she had love in her heart. And when she saw the condition that Naaman was in, she said, would to God that my Lord were with the prophet in Samaria, for he could recover him of his lips. And when the word got to the king, he said, if there's a cure anywhere, I will see to it that Naaman gets it. And the king of Syria wrote a letter to the king of Israel, telling, giving him Naaman's medical history, and sent him on his way. He sent him with ten talents of silver, six thousand pieces of gold. Tell me according to the present day money market that would be a hundred thousand dollars in silver and gold. Now Naaman thought that the cure would be expensive. 
but he found out it's free. The remedy for sin is free, always, to everybody. Well, salvation is free, but it's not cheap. It doesn't cost the sinner anything, but it costs God, his only begotten son. This is a gift of God. All you have to do is receive it with the hand of faith. Naaman thought uh, that it would be expensive. And then he thought it would take a little while. So he took ten changes of raiment. Went down to Samaria and when he got there he went to the king of Israel and presented his letter. And when the king read the letter, uh, he was distraught. He stripped off his garments and began to say, this man knows that nobody can cure another of leprosy. What he's trying to do is pick a quarrel. Uh, he just wants to have something uh, to accuse me of. And when the prophet Elisha heard that the king had rent his clothes, he said, send the leper to me, that uh, they might know that there is a prophet in Israel. And then when Naaman went to the prophet's house, there with his chariots and his servants, he just pulled up in front of the door, possibly sent a servant in, Tell that prophet, tell that preacher that Mr. Naaman's out here. I don't know what the prophet was doing, but I'm glad that he didn't even go out. He just sent him word. You just tell Naaman to go and wash in Jordan seven times, and he will be healed, he will be clean. And that's a very simple thing to do. That's a simple prescription. One is heaven's unit number one uh, three is heaven's sacred number and seven is heaven's number of completion god made heaven and earth in six days and rested on the seventh the walls of jericho didn't fall until joshua and his army had marched around them seven times elijah's servant went out scanning the skies looking for rain six times to no avail but that seven time he came back with a report i see a cloud just about the size of a man's hand so the prophet told him to go and wash in jordan seven times now any child would have known where jordan was and any child could have gone down in jordan and washed but no that was too simple for naaman naaman got angry. Naaman was raw. He went into a rage and said, what's wrong with that preacher? I thought surely that he would come out and lift his hand toward heaven and at least say a prayer. Your salvation isn't what, how, what the pastor does or the missionary does or the, 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 the person who is trying to lead you. It isn't what he does. I thought surely that he would even do me the courtesy to come out to me and greet me. No, he didn't do that. He just tell me to go and wash in Jordan. And I know Jordan is muddy. And if it's a matter of washing in water, why can't I wash in Abnon, far far the rivers of Damascus and be clean? But that wasn't what he told you to do. He told you to go and wash in Jordan. You know, there's just no substitute for salvation. And there's no way you can go around the Lord Jesus and be saved. This servant began to reason with him. I can see Naaman turning his chariot around. And I can see a blue streak from his profanity. Let's get away from here. But the servant said, Master, just think a little. If the prophet had told you to do some difficult thing. You would have been found doing that. If he had told you to give him a fee, you would have been doing that. But he simply told you 
to go and wash in joy seven times. And you'd be healed, you'd be made clean. Now, what would you rather? Would you rather go on in your pride with your leprosy, or would you rather go and do what the prophet told you to do? Naaman said, well, all right, if that's the case, come on, let's go down to Jordan. When he got there, possibly he asked, well, where is the bathhouse? Don't worry about the bathhouse, go on and wash in Jordan. What kind of towel am I going to dry with? Don't worry about that. You just go and wash in Jordan. He went down there to Jordan, and then the Bible says that he dipped himself. He went down the first time, and that first duck is willingness. Whosoever will, let him come. Wilt thou be made whole? Then he went down the second time, and that second time is humility. You've got to humble yourself before the Lord. He went down the third time, and that third duck is belief. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. He went down the fourth time, and that fourth duck was faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. He went down the fifth time, and that fifth duck is trust. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. He went down the sixth time, and that sixth duck is repentance. He, you have to turn from sin and self and turn to the Savior. He went down the seventh time, and that seventh duck is obedience. When he came up that seventh time, he looked at his hands, and his hands looked new. He looked at his feet, and they did too. Well, when he went down that seventh time, uh, he was sick. But when he came up, he was healed. When he went down that seventh time, he was spotted. But when he came up, he was smooth. He was wet, but he was well. <laughs> he was muddy, but he was clean. <laughs> he was still handsome, the same height, but he was humble. He's still, still the same height, but he'd been made whole. Oh, what a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Yeah, I, I did not have physical leprosy. I didn't have spots on my skin, but I had sin in my heart. Yes, I did, and sin in my soul and hatred in my heart. I hated other people. I went around talking about uh, they're holding me back and they're holding me down and I was bitter. Oh, but when the Lord came into my heart, you see, I heard about a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins where sinners can plunge beneath the flood and lose all their guilty stain. And I tell you, I went down the first time and when I came up, uh, there, there, new hope was born in my heart. Uh, when I went down the second time, waiting faith was rewarded. I went down the third time, and redemption became the order of the day. I went down the fourth time, and justification received a hearing. I went down the fifth time, and sanctification took a rightful place. I went down the sixth time, and holiness was enthroned in my heart. I, I went down the seventh time, and and when I came up, grace had done his work. Uh, yes, I'm talking about I'm saved. Uh, and I know I'm saved. Uh, I don't care what anybody said. I know whom I believe. And I am persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day. I know now that I'm saved. Now the first time I was born, I didn't know a thing about it. <laughs> When I, I was a pretty good sized boy, about two years old, before I became aware that I was even in the world. <laughs> Look at here, I'm here. I didn't know where, I didn't know who my parents were. Somebody had to tell me. I didn't know what my name was. And, and you know, I didn't know nothing if they let, let them hang Cedric Meshach on me. 
I didn't know a thing, but I had to take somebody else's word for it. Well, but when I was born that second time, then I, I can tell the world that I'm saved. But when I was born, I didn't need any affidavit from anybody. My soul was washed in the blood of the Lamb. Yes, good God Almighty, my sins were forgiven and my transgression were blotted out. He gave me power for the present and he gave me a bright prospect for the future. That's the reason I know I'm saved. I know I'm saved and I know I've been called to preach. Yeah, I know that the Lord is with me even now. Yes, I do. Yeah, I know and I know that when this earthly house of this tabernacle is dissolved, I know that I've got a, another building. <laughs> Thank God, I've got another building not made with hands. <laughs> That's the reason I delight in the durable domain of his everlasting dominion. I'm going to serve him. Yes, I am. And I'm not serving him to be saved, but I'm serving him because I'm already saved. <laughs> Good God Almighty, I, I, I'm not working to get to heaven. Good God Almighty, he's already gone to prepare a place for me. And then I don't even have to worry about where it is. You know, some cynics, uh, they try to cross me up and say, well, where is it? Do you think God's got a city out there in space? I say, yes, if he hung this earth out in space, Surely he can hang a city. Well, they say, well, where is it? I don't need to know where it is. He said when he got my mansion ready, he was coming back and he's going to furnish me an escort. I don't have to know where it is. Well, that's the reason I serve him. I delight in the durable domain of his everlasting dominion. I'm going to quit now, but I just want to let you know I'm saved and I'm going to serve him until I die, until I know that his omnipotence is overthrown. I'm going to worship him until I hear from heaven that his almightiness is abolished. I'm going to revere him. Our Father and our God, we are thankful for your word that's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Our Father, we are thankful for the privilege that we have to gather here in worship and in fellowship and in praise and in prayer. Oh God, may each person here think on his and her way. Our Father, those here who have not accepted you as Savior, we pray that they will do it now. Those who will not acknowledge you as Lord, let them know that you are not going to be their Savior or Lord, but you're going to be Savior and Lord. And our Father, help them to turn, help them to come to thee, help them to look to you and live. And our Father, some have gotten weak on the way. We pray that you will renew our strength. We pray that you will allow your flame and love to defrost our frigid devotion. So we'll be less of what we have been and more of what you would have us be. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.